I personally feel that if you are a coach or a small business owner or entrepreneur, if you have any type of creative content, you need to be on Pinterest. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Business Angels Podcast. I'm your host, Veronica, and today we're going to be speaking with Mackenzie Armstrong. Mackenzie is a Pinterest manager and strategist, and she helps companies grow their online presence and their business organically through Pinterest. I can't wait to hear what Mackenzie has to say, so stick around, and I'll be back right after this. Tony Robbins once said, no matter how many mistakes you make or how slow you progress, you are still way ahead of everyone who isn't trying. This is the Biz Essentials. You want to grow, get ahead, keep the spark. Here you'll get valuable insights and empowerment to grow personally and professionally. Isn't it about time you turn your dreams into successful passion projects? Learn how to be productive, be successful, be joyful, and more importantly, be yourself. The B Essentials. This is the Biz Essentials. And this is your host, Veronica of Veronica Ventures. I'm really excited to have you here, Mackenzie, because I was excited about what you do. But before I talk about it, why don't you tell us a little bit about who you are and what it is that you do? I am Mackenzie Armstrong, and my business is based around helping businesses grow their audience and email list using Pinterest organic strategy. So I really help uh, businesses to captivate their audience using Pinterest as a form of engaging with their audience. That's super interesting. And that's one of the things that I was excited about having you on my podcast, because I don't know about my audience, but for me, when I think of Pinterest, I think, you know, fashion recipes and crafting, and you're talking about using it to grow businesses and grow your email list organically. Can any business do this? Or is it just if you're in those industries? So I definitely think that there is a way to utilize Pinterest for any type of business. Um, Now, That being said, they're going to use Pinterest in different aspects. So say you were a brick and mortar. A brick and mortar can definitely use Pinterest. Um, It's a great way to um, kind of bridge that gap with maybe somebody that might want to work with you or buy your product online. Or if you're thinking about going in that direction, especially in the climate that we're in with everybody staying home. Um, But also the great thing about Pinterest for brick and mortar is that it's able to help you rank on Google. So that's another way of getting your name out there and showcasing your product or creative content. With online services and online businesses, it is a great way to get your um, creative content out. If you have a blog post, a podcast, um, any opt-ins, freebies, anything, any YouTube, anything like that, it's definitely a great way to get your content in front of your audience. The awesome thing about Pinterest is, is you're able to really kind of hone in on who your audience is. You're able to look at all the different analytics and things like that to kind of really see, okay, so I'm pulling a bunch of people from another part of the country than I, than I knew that I was pulling from. So that's a great way to kind of help you hone and shape your content that you're putting out as well as when is the best time to showcase your content. So scheduling and things like that. So Pinterest can be utilized by so many different aspects of business. I personally feel that if you are a coach or um, a small business owner or entrepreneur, that that if you have any type of creative content, you need to be on Pinterest because A, it's free. So you're getting that organic reach to your clients and to your audience. And it's a great way to really warm up your audience to get them to your website, to your email list, to start nurturing that relationship with your with your audience to really kind of bring in those warm leads that you can fully serve your ideal client. Interesting. See, and I could see, for example, I have a client, uh, Pearls with Purpose, they do jewelry sales. So I could see something like that being valuable on Pinterest because there are so many, you know, fashion pins and things like that. But, you know, let's get back to me because it's all about me. <laughs> With a podcast, like how do you use Pinterest for a podcast or other creative content when it's not something tangible, fashion, crafty, and things like that? When you think about Pinterest, I don't want you to think about Pinterest as a a social media avenue. I want you to think of it as a search engine. So you can literally go onto Pinterest and search anything by any topic, genre, whatever, however you want to search for it. So by doing that, you're able to reach a certain 
demographic or a certain group of people. So you're putting out a business podcast. Well, I am a new entrepreneur and I need to know and want to know everything I can about business. So I'm going to go on Pinterest and I'm going to search Pinterest. And hey, if I'm searching the same keywords that you're using or that your ideal audience is using, then your podcast is going to pop up. And then, hey, I'm going to become an avid listener because you're giving me all of this juicy information that I can use and utilize within my business. So think of it as it's just a a great way to really showcase your content and really draw in that person organically without wanting too much from them. You bring them in with your podcast and then you can start saying, hey, here's a free opt-in. All I want is your email. Then you can start to really build and get your name and your face in front of your ideal client through their email. That's really interesting that you mentioned it as a search engine, because I would have never thought of it that way. Now, forgive my ignorance, but when I think Pinterest, I think pictures. And so when you're pinning that, how do you work with the search engine optimization if you're pinning a picture rather than text? Or is there text in the pin? So that's great to point out. Think of Pinterest as a visual search engine. So kind of think that like Google and Instagram had a baby and that's kind of what came out of it. And that's a great wet thing about Pinterest is you're grabbing people's attention using pictures. So you're able to utilize different types of pictures or different types of layouts of your graphic to grab the attention of different types of people in your audience. So you're able to really utilize and pull out different aspects of your niche and really draw that attention attention of your audience. Now, yes, there is also text that goes with your Pinterest pins. You want that text overlay because like as you're scrolling, you want to make something that's eye-catching. So you want something that's super easy to read. And yes, I know everybody loves them, but script fonts are not the best for Pinterest. I know they're pretty, but they are difficult to read. So you want to make sure that you're able to stop somebody and get somebody's attention by having clear, concise fonts on your pins. Now, also you want to utilize the title and the description of your pins. That's where the meat of your pin is. I hate to say it, but people can be lazy and they're not going to probably read the full description of what your pin is about, but that's where you really want to utilize your title. The title is what's going to get them. The title is what shows up at the underneath the pin, not the description. You have to actually have to click through to read the description. So you definitely want to utilize the text overlay and the title for those keywords that are going to be searchable and that are going to be eye-catching and you want it to be concise. You want to tell the people what you are writing about because when you get cutesy and things like that, then you kind of lose the transparency of what content you're really wanting to give to your audience. You want to grab that attention. You want to say, hey, I saw the word business or I saw the word new entrepreneur and I want to click that. So that way you're able to grab the person. That makes a lot of sense. And yeah, different people would gravitate to different things. So there's so much to unpack here. I have so many questions. So my first question is you mentioned that it's a search engine with pictures. Does the search engine search the picture? Is it important to have keywords there or is that more to entice the viewer? They really haven't been straightforward about that. I like to use keywords on my graphic as well, just in case. But yeah, so you want to make sure that your pictures are are reminiscent of what the content that you're putting pull, putting out, you know what I mean? Because that's like another way to kind of catch the attention. But I say use the keywords everywhere you can. I say that anywhere that's visible, anywhere that you can type, use the keywords because that's what's going to be the most beneficial for you. I hope that answered your question. Did that make sense? (laughs) So in other words, we don't know, just be careful just in case. And so when you were talking about the graphic, it sounded a little bit like what I know about YouTube. So make sure that you use big, bold text that's easily, clearly understandable, especially on the mobile because the the screens are tiny. And then the title, at least from what I understand, is pretty much everything. That's what people are going to look at first. And so you want to make sure that that is enticing, but also clear so it's not clickbait. So when you're talking about I know for social media, there's a lot of like algorithms and people always talk about hacking the algorithm. Is there an algorithm within Pinterest, something that we should be aware of when we're doing pins? Yes. So that's actually a great thing to bring up. So Pinterest is great in the aspect that it doesn't compare you to your neighbor. It compares you to yourself. So what I can say is your best bet for Pinterest is be consistent. If you are putting out X amount of pins a month, make sure you are consistent with that. Now, I'm not saying you have to put out so many like buku amounts of pins each month, but 
bite off what you can handle and then you can always fluctuate from there but you want to make sure that you are staying consistent to what you are doing so say you're putting out four blog posts a month so you want to create four different types of pins for each piece of content so you want to make sure that you're doing that consistently each month now you can change up your strategy and things like that but you will see that reflect in your analytics so it what may take a month to kind of situate itself back to where it's it's basically having to relearn what you're doing relearning your behavior so that way you can it can monitor what you're doing and make sure that it's on the same flow that you were on prior to that. Basically, you just want to make sure that you are consistent with what you're doing and you should be good and you're not compared to the neighbor next to you. Just make sure that you are staying on top of your own thing. Interesting. So that that makes a lot of sense because a lot of the social media platforms reward consistency, but it sounds like Pinterest rewards that more than necessarily popularity as some of the other platforms would. That gives people like me who are small a chance. Yes. And to be honest, what was it? 97% of the brands on Pinterest are unbranded. They're not like huge companies like Coca-Cola and things like that. Like they're the, they're the small entrepreneurs and the Pinterest is really shifting its focus on wanting new, fresh content. So they don't want to see the same thing over and over again. They want to make sure that you are serving your audience with new ideas and new content constantly. So that way it doesn't become a stale platform. It's actually, it's always rejuvenating itself. And you mentioned that for every piece of content, you should have four different types of pins. Is there like a set kind of type of pin that you should have? Is that like a category kind of thing or is it just based on what it is that you're trying to promote? I try to do at least four, if not more different static pins per blog post. So if you have one blog post, you can have 15 pins for that one blog post if you choose. I definitely suggest having at least four so you can kind of get a little uh, bit of testing out there to kind of see what your audience is drawn to, if they like more text overlay, if they just like pictures, things like that, like and what type of stock photo that they like. But you also want to make sure that you utilize all the different types of pins that Pinterest has. So they have static pins, which are your normal. They don't move. Nothing moves. It's just that graphic. Then they have video pins, which is a video basically showcasing or kind of just being on topic of what you're what you're promoting. And then they have the idea pin, which the static and the video pin link out to your blog post or your podcast or whatever content you're putting out there. The idea pin does not. The idea pin is made to where you are sharing quick tips. It's kind of like an Instagram stories, but it doesn't disappear in 24 hours. It lives on your site. So I can go back and look at idea pins that I created for my clients and I'm still able to see that and still able to see that content. And then also my audience is still able to see that. And then it also is kind of cool because it gives you an opportunity that if there's like any updates with your content and you can say, Hey, look at this, this is the new thing. Like, you know, so you're able to have both of those showcased in your profile, but you want to make sure that they're really wanting that idea pin to be quick tips, tutorials, quick little snippets of things like that. And it's really to kind of give that social media feel to Pinterest. So you're able to like, and you're able to comment on things like that. So kind of keeps people on Pinterest, even though Pinterest is for taking you to other places, it kind of makes it more of a cohesive environment, if you will. Now, that's interesting that you say that. So does Pinterest reward idea pins more than they would content that takes you to other places? Right now, they are really pushing idea pins because that's their new baby that they're molding. But yeah, so they're really wanting people to make sure that that they're able to keep people on Pinterest, but they're still wanting people to go out and venture and learn new things and things like that. But it just kind of makes it more of a cohesive ecosystem, if you will, for the audience, as well as for the contributors to Pinterest. You mentioned uh, static pins and video pins, and I want to come back to video pins because I had no idea they did video. (laughs) And then the idea pins, was there a fourth one? Um, There are, there's like a carousel pin, which is kind of like an ideal pin that kind of got phased out a little bit. You can still do them. And now, so a video pin, that is brand new information to me. Is there a certain length that a video pin has to be, or is it just like a link to your YouTube video? How does, how do they work? So you can put any type of video in there. I generally don't do anything more than a minute because you kind of lose people after that. And yes, it can link back to anything. So a a video pin can link back to a blog post, a podcast, a opt-in, whatever. And you can even do, you know, personal video, or you can do like where they have stickers, where they flash, 
So that's still considered a video pin because there's movement. And then also you can do stock video if you have good stock video. That's super interesting. Is that a new thing that Pinterest is doing or has that been around for a while and I'm just dense? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's been, it has been around for a while, but they keep changing it around a little bit. You don't really hear about it as much anymore. So I'm curious if it's going to start phasing out and they were, they're were wanting you to utilize idea pins more because right now that's their sole focus. So let's Definitely say, use those. yeah, it's, it's kind <laughs> of like the Instagram reels. Like when they start pushing that content, that's what you need to be using because they actually promote it more. And yeah. so I'm going to start making some idea pins, but let's say we were promoting this blog post or this podcast. And I do make a blog post when I do the podcast. So both now, so I would want to make like an idea pin of like, you know, maybe five things you need to know about posting on Pinterest, right? Mm -hmm. And then link it to the podcast. And then maybe like a short video clip for the video pin, a static mm -hmm. clip, maybe like your your picture with a link to the profile, something like that. Mm -hmm. Is is that kind of where, where we would be going or would you have other ideas that would be good? I personally would do, okay, so just for the podcast, I would create at least five static pins for it. So five different pins with different graphics, different text overlays. And then I would do an idea pin and a video pin for it. And then I would do the same thing for the blog post because Pinterest wants anything that's a U that's connected to a URL can have a pin created for it. You can make a pin for your homepage or your website for the about me, for the, the contact me. You can make a pin for all of those things. They just want that URL and they want fresh URLs. So like I said, they, they're constantly wanting that new content. So your URL that say you, when you make the URL for the podcast and it's new, that probably will get more traction than an older URL. It's crazy, but they know how old your URL is. And they haven't been very clear because they never are about what constitutes as how old a pin is. You know, we don't know if a pin is only fresh for a day or if you have like a couple weeks on it. And then you also want to make sure that when you are putting out pins that you are using that URL once a day. Don't put that same URL more than once a day, but you can do it like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Interesting. I would have never thought of that. That's good to know. Good tip. I should put that on an idea post. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I have all kinds of notes because I've been learning so much from you already. I just want to make sure that I ask all the questions that our audience might have. You mentioned the carousel post. It's curious to me, is it a carousel post kind of like Instagram where it's more than one page or how does, how does that work within Pinterest? So it kind of just like cycles through static images. And like I said, like if I would, if I were to do a carousel pin, I would just do an idea pin because that's going to get more range than the, the carousel pin. I believe the carousel pin can, you can still link out to another website, whereas the idea pin, you don't have that option. Now, so when you're doing pins for Pinterest, is there something that we should keep in mind other than having like the clear text um, types of graphics or things that perform better than others? That would be, you have to, would have to test specifically for your audience and kind of what genre and what niche you're in. Um, but I will say that going back and I definitely recommend utilizing um, Google analytics along with Pinterest, you can kind of make them all talk to each other and kind of really see what content did very well. And you can always put that that content back out. When I said earlier, you know, they want that fresh URL. That doesn't mean you can't use your older URLs. If something does really well, like say you, um, you do craft videos and your main traffic is at Christmas time and all the Christmas crafts that you're putting out or DIY Christmas decorations. Even though you created that blog post, that podcast, that video a year, two, three years ago, that doesn't mean you can't put it back out. If it's still doing well and it still gets a lot of views, make fresh pins for it. You can always freshen up a pin and utilize past content. Don't think that you constantly have to filter in that fresh content. I mean, you do, but don't neglect your past evergreen content. Still filter in that older content and make fresh pins and bring a newer, broader audience to your content. So make sure that you're utilizing all your content and using your analytics to really kind of see what your audience is really interested in and when they're interested in it and make sure that you're revisiting those each year and putting out pins for those con that content. So for that evergreen content, yeah, that's a great way of getting fresh blood, so to speak, to that content. Let's talk about people who have, let's say, like a brick and mortar or sell actual products online. Because mm -hmm. a service type provider like myself, 
I can come up with a new thing just about every day and put it out there. But if you have an mm -hmm. online store or a brick and mortar store with an online presence, how do you make sure that you have fresh pins that Pinterest is going to pick up if you're not constantly adding necessarily URLs? Definitely make newer, make new graphics for those older URLs. And also I think that what people are doing now and being online constantly, I think that it would be beneficial for um, product-based companies or brick and mortars to put out a blog post or a, a quick podcast. I mean, like a blog post doesn't have to be super, super long. And you can also even link your Instagram to your Pinterest and you can pin from each from each direction. So you can pin from Instagram, you can pin from Pinterest, you know, so you can utilize your, your social media avenues as well on Pinterest without having to constantly do a product pin. But my thing is, is like, if you are selling a product, so for my teachers that sell teacher products, like teacher worksheets and things like that, I say, you know, take that worksheet, give us a three paragraph blog post of how you utilize that in the classroom or how, what are different ways to utilize it in the classroom. You can always write about how you use a product or the best way to use a product or how to make this product last longer. You know what I mean? There's always a way or always an avenue to pull out information about that product to really make sure that you are, you're getting that traffic and that activity on your website, you know, that also can help generate that searchability for you. There's 10 times more SEO opportunities when you're putting in blog posts and things like that for grabbing your audience that, Hey, I read this article about how to utilize this type of makeup. And now guess what? I'm buying your makeup line because you nurtured me through your blog post. Don't sell yourself short on the type of content that you can put out, even if you're only product based. Yeah. So maybe do like, like you mentioned a featured product kind of blog post, like, Hey, you know, mm -hmm. we've had this bracelet or whatever, and this is what it does mm -hmm. and how, why people love it and things like that. That's, that's a really mm -hmm. good point. Great way to drive traffic with the blog post and then you can pin it. So it's fantastic. Yes. Oh my goodness. I've learned so much. I, I already want to get started. <laughs> now for someone like me, I think I have a Pinterest account. If I don't, how would you recommend setting one up? Is that something that we want to do on a personal level, business level, both? Is it better to mix them? How would you recommend? <laughs> I personally started out with a personal one before I even dabbled in anything Pinterest. I was just using it to, you know, save crafts and DIY home projects and things like that. So I basically just took my personal account and you're able to flip it into a business account. You can just transform it into a business account and start there. And the great thing is, is like, say you have a personal account that has a whole bunch of followers or has a whole bunch of interaction on it. Don't recreate the wheel. Use that, nurture that audience that is already following you and um, interacting with you. So you can switch your personal account. Say you're starting from fresh, you can just start out with a business account. And even if it's a business account, that doesn't mean that you can't use it personally. I have a business account, but in the back end of my Pinterest, I have a whole bunch of boards and a whole bunch of content saved around like recipes and things like that, like nothing to do with Pinterest or nothing to do with my business. So you're able to still utilize Pinterest on a personal aspect, even if you have a business account through them. You know, you bring up an interesting point because a lot of the social media platforms, like let's say YouTube, and I realize that's not necessarily a social media platform, but it's kind of turning into one. You get a little bit penalized if you have different types of contents. For example, if I made a video about business things and then made a, a video about my kids, it's going to attract different viewers and thus mm -hmm. might split the focus of the people that are seeing my content. And then if they don't pick it up because they're not interested in that content, I would get penalized as far as analytics go. I know that in Pinterest, people can follow boards as opposed to following the person or both. Mm -hmm. So can you have different kinds of content and not get penalized or do you need to segment yourself? So I don't think that you'll get penalized through Pinterest itself. It just might kind of confuse your audience. I personally say like for my business account I have, or for what people can see on the outside of my Pinterest profile is everything about Pinterest marketing, things like that. Anything that can relate back to my business now, like, so I have a branding client who has a whole bunch of branding boards and copywriting boards and things like that. But also she takes it or how she has her client go through their branding strategy is she says, okay, well, let's think what type of art literature um, colors, things like that. Like what other outside influences help you 
determine and hone in what you want your brand to be. So she has those things on her Pinterest account, even though they don't necessarily reflect branding strategy, but she uses it, uses it as a tool to help her clients figure out what they want their brand strategy to be. So I think that you can definitely utilize it as long as you think that your audience is going to find it useful, keep it on your site. You don't need to hide it. You don't need to archive it. If it's going to be beneficial for your client or your, your main audience, then go for it. And to be honest, a lot of people, you know, like, especially like coaches, they sell themselves, they're selling their personality. So yeah, they might have travel blogs or travel boards on their Pinterest account because they travel. That's part of their branding. That's part of them. That's part of what they do. And that's part of what they're wanting their audience to know about them. So I think that it's all kind of cohesive, just as long as it, it reflects you, your business or whatever kind of you're trying to promote through your content. It makes a lot of sense. So you want to make sure that you know who your target audience is and just make sure that whatever whatever you're pinning that they can actually see not only has a synergy with your content, but also with your target audience. Did I get that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Perfect. And you brought up a really good point where you're talking about pinning things like travel and things like that. So would it be beneficial to pin other people's content as well so that you're kind of bringing in things that your audience would want to know that it's not just all about you? When Pinterest first started out, it was very much pinning 20% your content, 80% other people's content. Now we've kind of flip-flopped that. I really vet the the content that I put on there. There's no point in pinning it if it's not going to help my audience. So just kind of really making sure that you're mindful of that and not pinning anything that's, like you said, clickbait and things like that. Oh, there's nothing worse than finding a pin and then you click on it and then it takes you to another page where you have to click on it. And then that drives me nuts. (laughs) That's so dry. In fact, when I do searches and it comes up as Pinterest, I'm like, stupid Pinterest. I want to blog. (laughs) And so maybe that's why I don't know that much about Pinterest because it makes me mad. Uh, Don't do that to your, to your audience because it seriously pisses me off. (laughs) Um, Wow. So, So much to learn and so much to do and so much to experience, but before we wrap up, did we miss anything? Is there any final thoughts that you want to make sure that our listeners know about? Because there's a lot here. No, yeah, it is a lot to digest. And that's why people hire me. So that way I can take that off their plate for them. But I would just say, just remember, if you want to have that fresh content and you don't want to be spammy with Pinterest, you know, you don't want to be like putting out the same thing, constant, constant, constant. Um, And just remembering that the longevity of your content living on Pinterest is infinite. So it's not like Facebook. It's not like Instagram where, you know, you lose your content after you lose your post after 48 hours. No, that content will live there as long as people keep going to it and you're making it searchable and things like that. It will continuously bring you new followers and new audience. And definitely just, I can't stress it enough that Pinterest is so underutilized and it's a missed opportunity that if you have any type of creative content out there that you're not showcasing it on Pinterest. That's a really good point because I did read an article not too long ago that a lot of the social media sites, your posts live like two seconds. So it's totally depressing because I think Twitter is like 18 minutes or something. You have to be (laughs) constantly tweeting or you're out. And then I think, you know, like Instagram and Facebook were in the hour kind of range, not even like a whole day. Pinterest was one of the bigger ones. So Pinterest Mm -hmm. and blogs, that's where you want to be because people can find that content for a long time. Yes, it doesn't just yes. die. And you talked about people hiring you. Where can people connect with you if they want to talk to you more about how to do the Pinterest strategy? You can find me at armstrongvirtualsolutions.com. There's a contact page there that we can set up a chat and see if, if it's time for you to utilize Pinterest, or maybe you're not ready yet. So we can definitely talk through that. And then also I'm excited about, I'm going to be launching VIP days to where you'll have me for the whole day. And I will fully set up your entire Pinterest, your optimization and strategy. So armstrongvirtualsolutions.com. Perfect. And I'll be sure to put that in the show notes for anybody who's hearing this or watching this while they're driving. They'll be watching while you're driving. (laughs) Listen to it. (laughs) But they'll be able to find that information in the show notes. You had mentioned to me that you have a freebie for our audience who might be interested in doing the Pinterest on their own. Can you tell us a little bit about that? 
Perfect. So in exchange for your email address, I can send you a quick checklist for you to audit your either either existing accounts or if you want to create a new account that kind of gives you just the main aspects of how to get your account set up so that way you can start nurturing your audience and kind of really getting your name out there. So it's just a quick little checklist and I can shoot that over to you. Awesome. And I'll be sure to link that in the show notes as well, because, you know, a lot of us smaller businesses might have to start DIY first before we go ahead and contact Mm -hmm. somebody like you. For sure. For sure. Definitely. There's nothing wrong with starting out yourself. So awesome. I love it. Well, thanks so much for providing that for us. And like I said, I'll be sure to link that in the show notes. I want to thank you so much for being on the podcast. I learned a ton and I know our listeners did too. Great. Thank you so much. And I'm always excited to talk about Pinterest. So if you have any questions, shoot them my way. Absolutely. Guys, thank you so much for joining me today. And I'll be back to wrap up the show right after this. I'm so glad Mackenzie was able to come on the show because I'm really excited about trying this new strategy to grow my business. If you've tried Pinterest or are excited about trying it, shoot me a DM or let me know in the comments. I can't wait to hear from you. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for listening and I'll catch you next time on The Biz Essentials. You've been listening to The Biz Essentials. Thanks for listening to the show. We hope you've gotten some useful and practical information, learning how to be productive, be successful, be joyful, and more importantly, be yourself and turning your dreams into successful passion projects. By listening to this show, you've already set into motion the most important part, starting. So it's important to catch the next episode. Make sure to like, rate, and review the show. In the meantime, hook up with us on social media at Veronica Ventures and at The Biz Essentials. Till next time, this is The Biz Essentials. Today's quote of the day is by Walt Disney. He once said, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. So go out there, take action, and I'll catch you next time on The Biz Essentials. Bye.